Today's topic is going to be about faster tonguing and I have here my alto sax and clarinet to try and demonstrate how to get your tongue going just that little bit faster for these single reeded instruments. To constrain the scope of this video, I'm just going to demonstrate faster single tonguing. So yes, there is double tonguing and it's very prevalent on brass instruments, but not so much on single reeded instruments because of the artifacts that it can create. And generally we're reasonably fast at single tonguing and, it, and a lot of music doesn't really go so fast that we can't achieve the same thing with a single tongue. Um, I'll touch on that, but it's almost like a completely different topic in itself. Even before we put an instrument in our mouth, we can normally get an idea of how fast we're going to be able to tongue by being able to just articulate it with our mouth. So I like to use um, two. Uh, it just helps narrow or channel the sound a bit more, tu -tu 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 -tu, rather than say ta-ta-ta-ta-ta, which is very sideways. So if you can say then you know roughly how fast you're going to be out the tongue. So I'm riding that air, I'm blowing air, and I'm using the tip of my tongue to ride that air. I am bouncing off that airflow. So imagine a flag, this is where I stick in some stock footage of a flag flapping in the breeze. That, that wind is absolutely going for it, and that flag is flapping in the, in the breeze. But it's not big movements, okay? The wind is such that the, the way that the flag vibrates is very, very small vibrations. Now we want to try and achieve the same thing with our tongue. And then we've got to try and keep it going. So we've got to have this forward momentum. We've got to keep on going, keep on going, keep on going to some kind of arbitrary destination. So if we want to think a bit more rhythmically, got to try and build ourselves to the end of that phrase. Now if we do it with an instrument in our mouth, same idea. If you can play that fast, there's a really good chance you can single tongue it, but we have to of course hit the read, but again you want to be ridiculously close to it. Because I don't like to discriminate. Now notice I'm playing um, a rhythmic passage. Sure, we can just try and play as fast as possible. But in some ways we, we kind of want to think of it rhythmically. A lot of music is quite rhythmic, obviously, unless we're doing some kind of rubato or a condenser. So when you're doing your little tonguing exercises, it's nice to put a rhythm to it. semi quavers are fine. for that one a little bit stalled out a little bit but there's our fast tonguing very very close to the reed and we're just riding that airflow quite a few things need to go right before that tongue is going to really fly first off we have to make sure our tongue is in the right place at all our tongue is always touching the reed as unintuitive as that sounds our tongue is immediately positioned right next to that reed so close that it is touching it it is not applying pressure by default and that allows the reed to con continue to vibrate and thus generating the sound however we are ridiculously close and that means that we don't have very far to go to then make the tongue effect happen so same thing for clarinet saxophones here's saxophone our tongue is about say let's say a centimeter down the reed it is not at the very very tip your tongue is not distant it is not real curled back note that tongue is always under that reed as if you're essentially saying tu -tu 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 -tu, but with a reed in the way so we're tutu -tu on that reed same thing for clarinet okay our tongue is always touching that reed it is right there and that is the position of a single tongue. Now in case it's a little bit difficult to tongue it all, one can do a following drill. What I like to do is I, I, I suggest placing your tongue on that reed, like literally sticking your tongue on there and closing that reed shut and then trying to blow against it. So nothing happens. Okay, now if we were to then release the tongue from the reed, um, so just enough to let the air go through, you get an explosion of air because you've built up air behind the tongue. And bam! 
bang, you've got your tongue sound. Okay, so now you get your honk, honk, honk. Same thing on clarinet. We, blow, we put our tongue down. Nothing. Can't blow through the, through the fact that we've squished that reed shut. But then you release your tongue. Okay, so now that you've got this bang, this explosion of sound, what we want to do is then stick our tongue back down again. But because we're close it, we're still trying to blow. We've got this air that's stuck, stuck behind the tongue, sealing off the sound. So it's a bit nasty and raw, but that will get that tongue used to actually touch that reed. So now at this point, hopefully you're realizing that you do not have to move your tongue very, very far to achieve this effect. You don't have to take your tongue right off. You do not have to curl it back. You don't have to do some weird thing with the mouth. No, we are essentially taking our, re our tongue that's acting as a dam, releasing the air, putting it down. So in some ways, if you want a metaphor, think of the mains water in your house. The water is always trying to get out of those taps. You close the tap, no water can come out, but that water is trying to get out. So you get a leak, you got water going everywhere because of the water pressure. You release that tap, lots of water, close it, it's now stopped. That is like your airflow. And our tongue is stopping that airflow, but that airflow is always trying to get out that instrument. Now this is very, very important because later on, as we play faster and tongue, faster tonguing, we're relying on the airflow for your tongue to ride that air. The next step to some faster tonguing is somewhat mental. Um, you have to imagine what you're trying to do with these notes. Let's say you got a passage, it's uh, say five notes, very, very fast. Da, 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 You have to have it in your head that you are going to the end. So it's a matter of uh, not getting stuck. You don't want to stall out. You want to play as if you're leaning into this phrase. So let's take a C, for example, on a clarinet. Okay, we are riding the airflow. But we're trying to get to the destination note. Now, let's say we have an extra bunch of notes. Okay, let's say we, let's say we have um, da, 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 so nine, one, two, three, four, one, two, those semiquavers, one, e, and a two, e, and a three, or three, and a four, e, and a one, we're going to beat one. We have to go into it with the mindset that we're getting to the destination. We don't want to stall out. If you start to not be the skimming stone across the water, you're just going to go to the funk. You have to imagine that skimming stone that you're skimming across the lake, that thing has to skim one and a two and a three. Or, okay, sorry, let's go three and a four and a one. Da -da 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 -da. You have to have it in your head what you're trying to do with all those tongued notes. Now, can your tongue go that fast? Uh, that's maybe the topic of um, technique. But unless you know what you're trying to achieve, it's, it's very difficult to actually make yourself do it. You do not want to psych yourself out um, from the get-go. You've got to look at that destination note, your beat one, three and a four and a one, and get there. So let's do a recap. So first of all, tongue position. We want a tongue about a centimeter down the reed, always touching that reed, not necessarily pressing the reed, but always touching because we want to be ridiculously close so that the smallest movements are going to trigger a tonguing effect. We want airflow, continuous airflow. Always trying to blow air. And allowing that tongue to ride the air. To double check that you can actually get a really good fast tongue, remember, it's always about trying to make sound effects of your mouth, right? If you can get that fast with your mouth, there's a good chance you'll be able to pull it off with your instrument. Okay. And the same thing applies for saxophone, of course, same idea. Always staying really, really close to that reed. If you're wondering what part of the tongue, it's 
not really the tip of the tongue. It just sounds nice to say tip of the tongue, the tip of the reed, but that's never really the case. It's always about a centimeter down and it's just back of that tip. Just a little bit further back. Just imagine when you're saying ta 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 ta, what part of the tongue is getting hit? It's just that part just back of the tip. Seeing I'm putting this video together, let's try some double tonguing. Now I have here a trombone mouthpiece. Brass players don't have a reed in the way, and to achieve a double tongue effect, you essentially get tuku 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 tuku. So maybe like T U H K U H. So very easy to get your sound. You can see that it's a lot faster than just just by a smidgen. Now I find, unfortunately, that. There are a lot of artifacts in doing the coup. So you have to be super on your game to get your coup to sound the same as your two. Now, on clarinet and saxophone, there's the same problem. So our two is on the reed, but our coup is actually the top of the mouth. So pretty much as we're saying tuku tuku tuku, your two is the reed, your coup is the top of your mouth, just like as you were to say it without a mouthpiece in your mouth. Now this thing is very very hard to master and personally I'm lousy at it. Because as you can hear is this kind of this artifact sound. They don't sound the same. Tuku 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 tuku. Now one could say that if I practice this lots, I might be able to get it faster and faster. But the question is, will it ever be faster than an individual tongue? And maybe, but then you're having to deal with the artifacts of the coup sound. So really is this bit of a trade-off. If you can pull it off, all power to you. It'll sound amazing, but I find it very difficult. And that's what we have to do, but ew, yeah, it's, it's very, very tricky. But just like anything, I'm sure if you were to practice your tuku tuku tukus and get it faster, you might be able to do something like and play like a gazillion miles an hour. <laughs>